Hello and welcome to the big picture. Just a day after the euphoric victory of the Ahmadmi party in the Delhi elections and a lot of analysis about it, some may feel it's a little too early to ask questions. The Ahmadmi party government is expected to be sworn in a couple of days and therefore some may feel one should wait till at least they get in. However, the expectations raised by the Ahmadmi party and the mandate they have got for it is an indication of the urgency the voters feel. The AAP manifesto as well as its leader Arvind Kejriwal has made many promises aimed at improving the lives of Delhiites. Today we want to look at some of these key promises and discuss how much of it is achievable. It's no secret that the detractors and critics and even some well-wishers have raised doubts about the feasibility of some of these promises. So we look at these promises and see how many are achievable and how many may just be an illusion as some critics dub it. To discuss this, I have with me an eminent panel who knows what governance is all about. I, I have with me Ved Marwa, former Delhi Police Commissioner and also a former go governor among others. Ajay Shankar, former Special Secretary Ministry of Power and in the Government of India. And Saurabh Bhardwaj, a former minister in the 49-day-old AAP government and probably a future minister too. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Saurabh, First, congratulations on the victory. We have not, uh, you know, spoken to each other after that. But tell me, I am not. I am not going to ask you about, you know, issues where legislations are involved, where you know, where things like um, a separate uh, uh, Jan Lokpal bill or things like that, which are which are all legislative measures. Uh, let us not discuss those legislative measures. I am asking you some of the things, some of the promises which you people have made. Which are which will directly affect the day-to-day -day life of the people of Delhi. One of them, one of the promises you have made is that we will make par par uh, uh, tariff fifty percent. You will cut the par tariff by fifty percent. How are you going to achieve this? And what are the kind of revenues which you need for it? Has this been thought through? Yes. The I think uh, we have been always saying uh, that uh, there is a lot of uh, huge corruption which is happening uh, in our power sector and that is why when we came to power we ordered the CAG audit. The CAG has been to the Delhi High Court three times uh, saying that the power companies are not cooperating uh, with the CAG audit. So we hope that when we come to power, when we form a government, we will arm twist uh, these power companies and get their CG audit done. And we uh, we are very hopeful that there is so much of corruption uh, which is happening. They are fudging their accounts, their books, and we can reduce. And there are other reforms also which we have thought like. Okay, I think there's a problem with your uh, OB. We'll get, set it right. We'll come back to you. But uh, Mr. Ajay Shankar, how would you look at this? You know, they say. It, does it make sense what they are saying that there is a lot of corruption one, second there is a lot of leakage, there is a lot of overcharging of uh, the bills, overcharging as far as the tariffs are concerned. So we will we'll set that in order and then we can reduce the power tariff by 50%. Uh, I, I think uh, in one of his TV interviews uh, recently Mr. Kejriwal took a more nuanced position. He spoke of uh, lifeline consumption. He also spoke of getting the CAG audit completed very quickly and then taking appropriate measures. Now the fact of the matter is that uh, the <coughs> tariffs can be made half provided the government is prepared to give that much as a subsidy. That is the, that is the simplest thing uh, to That do. is the, the only solution because the space for actually removing costs may not be that large. You mean cutting costs? Cutting costs. Okay. So even if the CAG audit finds uh, some uh, weaknesses, which it may, the, the aggregate macro picture will not give you the cushion to lower costs by half. By half. There is no way it can happen. Similarly, the private companies can be thrown out, electricity can be nationalized again. But again, I am very doubtful whether post-nationalization you can get greater efficiencies because the fact of the matter is that most daily consumers and the other uh, regulatory commissions have found that an aggregate transmission and distribution losses have come down. 
this is what is happening. This actually happened and actually across not, the board, across the states actually. No, uh, in, in Delhi. In Delhi especially. Far more than other states. Right. So uh, I think a, a more nuanced view would need to be taken. And similarly on lifeline consumption, the people of Delhi... What is lifeline consumption? So you say that, okay, I think uh, three bulbs, one fan free, three bulbs, one fan, one cooler free, three bulbs, one fan, one refrigerator, one television set free. Okay. So you decide where you want to draw the line and subsidize that. And that is what the law of the land says. The NXT Act 2003 says that whatever is a commercially viable, reasonable tariff, over and above that, the government can always subsidize poor consumers. In other states, farmers get NXT free. Right. And the state governments give the money to the publicly Subsidize, subsidize it. So that is, that, that is possible, but you say that there is little room for cutting costs. There would be room, but not of the order which would lead to lowering tariffs by half. So I think the debate will have to go towards what is lifeline consumption and who do we subsidize and, and one, one, one more, one more uh, uh, promise of the of the Aadmi Party is that they will be setting up Delhi's own power plant. How feasible is that? Now that's a very good idea, but it will take three to five years. So, so whether it is coal or it gas based or whatever. They can look at various options. It makes good sense to set up a power plant and get slightly cheaper power. In fact, one of the reasons is of the problems of Delhi is that the contracted cost of power is a little higher than it could be if, if other options were up. Other options including having their own power plants. Uh, power plant right. or contracts with yeah. others. Mr. Marwa, how would you look at these promises? You know, one because I am sure you, you have worked at the at, at all levels in Delhi. You think that this is one uh, 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 promise which the people will appreciate if they are if they are able to actually, uh, you know, do good, uh, do good that promise of 50% power cut. You know, with this sort of mandate which they have got, and um, now they should look at the problems in slightly longer term. They should have a five-year span in view and not lose their energy in populist measures which will create immediate problems also. So, and they made a number of promises <coughs> and a number of them are doable. They should not get involved in running a, a, a running battle with the, uh, the center because there are constitutional limitations, there are legal uh, limitations and they will have to work within those limitations instead of um, you know passing legislations which cannot be implemented or which the center will not improve, will approve or having populist measures where their own budgetary resource will, will come under pressure. Prayer. What they should concentrate on as uh, and, uh, the former minister of AAP has said, they should improve the administrative culture of Delhi. The day to do harassment which an ordinary citizen undergoes in Delhi is you know, amazing. Amazing. I mean every one of us even I, you, I, even you as a, as one of the VVIPs in Delhi can watch VVIPs even for paying my taxes, uh, let's, let's say property tax uh, paying to the NDMC, you can't imagine the amount of harassment one undergoes. You're paying taxes, <laughs> You're but, right. but that's how that's how things are. Any any little thing, look at uh, our transport department. Now in Delhi, 80 percent of the manual rickshaws are unlicensed. Right. No, uh, somebody should uh, look at this and license them, otherwise they all um, face extortion both from the civic, uh, civic officer and, and, well the and police. Police, police officers. Now these things are doable. Apart from that, they should concentrate on what they have promised by way of improving education, schools, that functioning, is right. um, right. hospitals. Saurabh, Saurabh, I am sure you heard. Uh, Mr. Marwa, Mr. Marwa, one of the senior most citizens in Delhi who, is, who, who understand and having been the former police commissioner of Delhi, he is, he is saying what, can, what kind of administrative problems which people face. So, you know, and his, his, his we can call it advice actually being, be, being the senior citizen that he is, his advice that don't get into populist schemes. But there are quite a few populist schemes that your government has, that your, sorry, your uh, party has promised. You think that can become a problem for you people pursuing these populist schemes?
one of them being uh, what I, uh, uh, first of all thank you yes uh, first of all thank you uh, to mr mara uh, for sharing his suggestions with us and they are very welcome and that's what we uh, intend to say that we need a lot of people a lot of advisors like people uh, like mr mara and we cannot alone you know solve all the problems of delhi we need your you know help your continuous suggestions and we are ready to work with all of you and help make delhi better yes our intentions are good our intentions are clear that we want to serve the people of delhi uh, the agenda the manifesto which we have published is a is a kind of a road map where this government once formed we'll try to follow and uh, once we form a government all of us will sit down and will prioritize things like which are the things which people need the most which are the things which the government can deliver at the earliest and that's how we'll make a prioritized list sort of start delivering items sorry yes, sir uh, mr marwa rightly pointed out that the administrative right okay no no please finish that okay uh, he he was right when he said like you know the administrative reforms or at least you know we should provide uh, relief to the people whenever they are dealing with the administration there is so much of corruption and not just corruption there is so much of administrative inefficiency the lethargy people have to you know uh, come every day on you know uh, go till to post to get the small works done i think these things can be uh, sorted out easily once we uh, make use of technology once we make use of you know a uh, lot of e-commerce we can we can easily okay uh, make the life of the people easier if you have good intentions okay okay so i think that let let's look let's look at some of the other promises which you people have made you are saying that 10 to 15 lakh cctv cameras will be set up making water a legal right fine but you know providing 700 liters of free water to every household and then you have got to build 2 lakh toilets 500 new government schools 20 new government degree colleges 30000 more government hospitals hospital beds uh, to create and to create 8 lakh jobs you know these are all these all all these obviously the people of delhi seems to have uh, you know taken taken it positively and given you this massive mandate <laughs> but <laughs> you know they think that you are going to deliver all these things have you been have, have you have you people thought through this what is the kind of what is the kind of funds which you need to have to do yes. some even even one tenth of what you are promising yes uh i uh, through your program and i I'm, i'm sure it is widely uh, you know viewed i would like to assure the people of delhi as an mla i would like to assure them that whatever we have promised in our manifesto has been well thought we do have a blueprint for that and we do have all the good intentions uh, to deliver those promises yes it's a difficult task and that's why people have voted us that's why they have three choices and out of three they voted us because they thought that probably we are the ones who would deliver on these difficult tasks and we would try our level best and we are still committed to our manifesto we uh, what we say is that yes we need cooperation from the people we would need cooperation from the central government however we have the plans to deliver whatever we have promised in these five good years okay uh, shalaja chandra we are, we are now joined in by shalaja chandra former chief secretary of government of delhi Shalaja Chandra, you heard uh, Saurabh Bharadwaj, a former minister of AAP and maybe a future minister also, and we'll get to know in a couple of days. These, some of the things which I uh, listed out, some of the promises which I listed out, which they have made, how many of them are achievable? How do you think they'll be able to achieve this? No, first let us look at the revenue situation. Where do they get their revenues from? Well, the revenues of Delhi come mostly from VAT, value-added tax, and that is followed by motor vehicle tax entertainment uh, tax excise duties that is where the uh, um, money comes and um, that is in a way finite it grows from year to year but not um, um, so much that you would be able to change the way the budget is implemented lowest to that there in fact that they 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 even promise that they ensure that the the vat in delhi will be the lowest in the country so that means that the you are saying vat is one of the ma major sources of revenue yes. and if they are going to bring down the rates of that 
there there goes some of the some some revenues at least yes 67% in fact of the budget i mean the the collection the revenues are collected through vat vat right yes so you know, and what about you know the kind of the kind of promise we find with new government schools or 20 new degree colleges that See, all these are promises which uh, any it's not so com it's not just uh, the aam aadmi party which has done it every party makes election promises no, no, they, now now that aam aadmi party has got elected they have to implement these promises at least show that how are they going to what we trying to look here is that you know how much of it is achievable In knowing the lead time taken for constructing even one college it does seem to be something which is so ambitious and so problematic in delhi because first you don't have land and right. then when you do have to acquire land then there is a lot of uh, construction issues which come up and i heard that uh, mr bhardwaj was talking about inefficiency right. but inefficiency is also because the very people who expect efficiency are the first to uh, throw stones at bureaucrats for being careful <laughs> and when the vigilance cases start none of them are around to save you so i would say that it's uh, easy to say that everything will be managed with great speed and i wish them well but i do feel that uh, money will be a huge crunch if delhi had been a state it would have, could have gone in for market borrowings it could have levied assess it can't do either of these things so resources are finite and practically half your budget if in fact 52% goes for non plan expenditure which has nothing to do with new construction new capital works new development schemes it's purely salaries and maintenance and keeping the old stuff going so with half of whatever you earn say 40000 you bring it down to 20000 crores it's not very much for a place like delhi with the kind of promises that have been made even on a very very you might say rule of thumb estimate it's difficult but then i would not say that they have been done any thing remiss in making promises every political party okay. has done okay. it uh, mr marwa one of the important issues which uh, shalja chandra raised and i am told that when uh, mr arun kejriwal went to meet the home minister today he has sought you know he has made this demand that delhi should become a state should be should get a full statehood is that is that something which can solve certain problems of this first of all it is not feasible it is not feasible because to do that you need constitutional amendment no but you okay wait a minute no, but let us assume amendment let us let us assume that the center agrees to, to a constitutional but center agrees to it so constitutional amendment can be done my own personal view is and here mr kejriwal is not going to agree right. with what i say delhi doesn't need a full fledged state delhi is a metropolitan city what it requires is a administration for a mega city and not a, a, a full fledged state with an infrastructure secretariat this and that which slows uh, administrative uh, decisions uh, it in slows further slows down than what it is already what is already there and uh, because you know the uh, you know how our secretariat uh, uh, function you require immediate policy decisions and coordination because each decision has its uh, uh, its interlinked with various other departments so somebody who is responsible not just for one department but for take for example uh, the um, trans, um, uh, traffic jams which take place in delhi now it is not just the traffic police which you require you require traffic police you need transport department you require uh, the um, uh, city and the road maintenance uh, uh, cwd lighting pwd light, light pwd lighting the policy to, to grant uh, licenses and to registration for cars how many cars you should have you know all these things are and and environmental considerations they are all interlinked and what people have voted is because they think nothing is happening Delhi wakes up only when the crisis takes place. Then they start blaming each other. Uh, Center blames the states. Let, let, let me get let me get Saurabh the numbers. Be I, I, before I get Saurabh, actually let me get uh, Shalya Chandra. Shalya Chandra, we, do, would you would you agree with Mr. Marwa that Delhi doesn't need a full statehood? 
No, I wouldn't agree with him that it does not need full statehood. I would be in favor of statehood, but I would put two or three caveats. And the central government should retain its powers, which are today with the central government for all acts. They have powers for over the MCD. They have powers over the um, DDA. Because you cannot have a city government which does not have the technical capacity to be um, handling things which have long-term implications. As far as police is concerned, even the Administrative Reforms Commission had very clearly said that security of the capital and things which have to do with intelligence gathering, so many other things should not be with the city government. This is the capital of the country. For that matter, the NDMC area, area around Red Fort, some sensitive area should not be with any city government. And even in uh, Washington, D.C., you have the District of Columbia yeah, which absolutely. is being administered. So, so so, so is that is that the is District of Columbia Washington DC is the, is the, is the role model for this? Yeah, should should that be, be the role? Because NDMC is hardly two percent of Delhi. It can't be limited to just NDMC. There are many things which should not be with the state government because they lack the technical ability and the capacity. Because we just don't have those kind of officers and okay. the kind of knowledge. Okay. But there is a lot which has to be done in terms of being given a democratic representation. After all, the constitution said that things must devolve on the people. That is not happening under this structure. Okay. So there is, a, there is a way of doing it. And uh, uh, if you give me time, I'll uh, no, tell you yeah, yeah, I, have to, I have to. Let me get uh, Saurabh in on this. Saurabh, I am sure that there will be many more discussions. Saurabh, your, your, uh, your leader, Arvind Kejriwal, today is supposed to have told the Home Minister, met the Home Minister and told him the, and sought free, full statehood. And now you have heard two of the most senior officers of, you know, who, has, who have known Delhi having their views about it. So, you know, you, what is your party's view in, in case the central government has, because you, 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 you see, see here that the, the opinion is divided on this whole thing. So, is this something a priority on the list of your party? Uh, I think anybody who has had, uh, you know, an experience of uh, governance in Delhi, anybody who has dealt with MCD, TDA, or you know, other uh, other civic agencies, does know it. You know that it's it's a mess in Delhi. You know, getting anything done in Delhi is a very tedious process simply because of the fact that a lot of things are under the control of central government and central government has lot of responsibilities of the country they have so many things you know they have foreign relations they have gdp they have they have hell lot of things to think about rather than thinking about the land issues of delhi uh, so it's a very legitimate demand and all political parties whether it was congress whether it was bjp for last 15 years everybody is of an opinion or was of an opinion that Delhi should have a complete statehood. Yes, of course, what uh, uh, the lady said, with some caveats, like uh, if if uh, we talk about the law and order of Newton study, where we have all the VVIPs staying, where we have the Prime Minister staying, where we have the uh, President staying, yes, that should not be under the state government. And for that, you can have a different, uh, different police, which is directly under the central government. But... You know, I don't think if there is a you know theft happening somewhere in Narela, <laughs> Rajnath Singh should be responsible because police reports to Rajnath Singh. This is a, uh, this is <laughs> no, a deadly stupidity. You are giving and, a very uh, deadly uh, example think which nobody can disagree with you. <laughs> well, okay, Mr. Ajay Shankar, what do you, how do you look at <laughs> so this? So I think uh, yes. I, I'll, I'll let me get the other. No, first of all, I'd like to make a couple of points on the ambitious agenda. Yes, ambitious agenda. Other than electricity, the rest is not that difficult. Hmm. For instance, 700 liters of free water and taking water to every household is something overdue because water is a lifeline. Company. Absolutely. And in the leakage in water in Delhi is the order of 40-45% in the Delhi distribution <coughs> system. So you globally, plug the, you plug globally it is 15-18%. Okay. Water and sewage pipes have not been replaced ever in Delhi. So that could give you 30-40% extra water. So water actually is a low hanging fruit. Similarly, the other commitment that unauthorized colonies would be regularized right. within a year and no jugi would be demolished till an alternative in housing in is given. In situ development will take place. In situ or alternative. Okay. This again is an overdue commitment because I think one of the weaknesses of the post-reform period in India has been the retreat of the state 
from provision of affordable housing absolutely to people whose on whose work we are fully dependent absolutely so these are actually quite doable things if properly handled not only doable but necessary also uh, which it is necessary that's why they've got yeah. the mandate <laughs> absolutely uh, coming to the larger question of uh, statehood i think as mr marwa rightly said that it would be best for the government to focus on the powers that they have and use them effectively and and the other idea that they have put in their debate is that do we devolve financial and executive powers to the mohalla samitis in a truly participatory exactly. democracy right that i think has real potential for transforming the quality of life in delhi mohalla samitis actually saurabh mohalla samiti welcome to you shalja this also mohalla samitis there are the, again there are <laughs> there are again varying views on this mohalla samitis that you know you you are going to create this 350 300 350 mohalla samitis and already there are elected corporators in the ndmc mcd and all these things we may come in on that yes. also i think more than statehood i think it's a radical idea but i would like to put it on the table that actually the three municipal corporations are not the solution one was made three actually you need a unified city government so the chief minister of delhi should have all the responsibilities with the three corporations discharge and you have effective mohalla samiti so you those three uh, those three committees continue the three municipal corporations should be wound up wound some up. responsibilities go to mohalla samiti don't don't forget balance go to the government of delhi right. because if you look at the global system the mayor of shanghai the mayor of paris the the mayor of uh, new york has far more authority than the chief minister of delhi has right you know ndmc three corporations and don't forget the containment board right. you got another containment board right so whole civic uh, mm -hmm. administration mm -hmm. is in a mess okay yeah. saurabh is is that what you people are also thinking of that you know this, yes. these three committees should be you know wound up and then as mr ajay shankar uh, suggested i think i think look uh, like uh, 10 years back or like 2 years back people people of delhi were not very much aware or at least they were not very much interested in the politics you know how these you know different agencies interact with each other but i think there has been a radical change in the psyche of the people people have started or people have uh, developed interest in understanding how a city is governed and what interactions these different civic agencies have with each other and how you know uh, the development or the decisions uh, do not take place because of lot of mess in delhi i think it's a right time when we should start a healthy discussion there should be a healthy discourse uh, there should be a consensus building exercise and everybody should try to understand yes people of delhi also have some constitutional rights for a good healthy life and uh, because like one of the gentlemen said that you know it's our fundamental right that we should be governed the way we want ourselves to be governed absolutely and, okay uh, <laughs> yes because we are a capital does not mean that you know we are always in a mess <laughs> okay shalja chandra very quickly last words to you these you know mohalla sabhas these will they come in conflict with the if 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 mr ajay shankar's suggestion is taken and wound up the three committees are wound up then it's a different matter if it continues these mohalla sabhas how do they coexist or can they coexist at all it will be difficult because either you have a mayor and council kind of a situation and you do not really then really quite frankly you don't need a state government then it can be completely run uh, centrally but you have the mayor totally responsible for the city right but the city has grown and is now if you look at un figures if you include the noida and gurgaon and all the satellite towns it is a metropolitan area of something like 25 million right and uh, probably the most dense population next to tokyo and mexico right so that being so you would have to have a semblance of a state government you can't wish that away if there is a state government then there would be always interface with the mayor and with the uh, with the um, corporations and that kind of a situation today also you have bjp and all the three corporations right. so these political elements would come up i think that the mohalla uh, sabha idea per se is not bad already the resident welfare associations in delhi in the organized okay. colonies are playing a role but having said that they would need a law to have elections to who should be the mohalla sabha people okay. that will run counter to the municipal uh, corporation absolutely act. so th there are there are still problems there but anyway uh, uh, we are completely out of time but 
you know, the, the, these kind of dis more discussions will obviously take place. I'm sure the Amadmi Party has thought through some of these things, but uh, surely, as some of my pa guests in the pa and the panel said that they are going to face certain problems. We'll see how they will be able to overcome it. There will be se several more occasions to discuss these things. Thanks to all my guests, Aura Bharadwaj, uh, Ved Marwa, Ajay Shankar and Shalja Chandra. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue in Big Picture, same time tomorrow.